For decades, the Vietnam War has been a Hollywood obsession. Apocalypse Now, Platoon, Full Metal Jacket, First Blood. These were blockbuster films, embraced by audiences and critics alike. And for decades, they've helped us understand a painful war and understand each other. From Spotify and the Ringer Podcast Network, I'm Brian Raftery, and this is Do We Get to Win This Time? How Hollywood Made the Vietnam War. Listen on the Big Picture feed. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two-year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliet Littman. I'm here with Callie Curry. Callie, we made it. Dot and Charity are together, just as we suspected. Congrats to you. We're here. Well, congrats to you too. I congrats to everyone watching because I think <laughs> we've known for at least how many weeks since this show? This is this has been week nine. I would say we've known since week four, maybe three. Yeah, three, four. Something in there. There was like maybe two seconds in this episode. I was like, maybe no, 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 dot. <laughs> and that's just because Charity's mom clearly liked Joey more. Yes, I can't wait to discuss that. There's that that was the most interesting part of the episode, obviously. I was very confused exactly about what was happening, but we'll we'll dig into it. A lot to dig into. I just need to make a couple housekeeping notes. First of all, this is our only episode this week. Next week we're off. Then I said we were gonna be doing a Hannah Brown rewatch for September. I assumed that every episode, every season of The Bachelorette, <laughs> particularly the best season of The Bachelorette, would be available on Hulu. But I'm incorrect, and it is not available. Therefore, we will not be doing this rewatch. And I am going to use all of my levers, which is to say, send a few emails to see if we can get Hannah Brown's season. I'm sure it has mm. to do with licensing, so I don't know if it's going to work out. But FYI, we'll still have a lot of fun stuff coming up over the next few months. And then, as they said, Thursday nights are going to be Bachelor Night on ABC. So starting September 28th, it's one hour of Golden Bachelor followed by two hours of Paradise on Thursday. So Callie and I will recap those on Thursday nights and then we'll have another episode uh, on Mondays or Tuesdays. Uh, (laughs) Yes. Have I caught you off guard here? (laughs) Yeah, you have. Because I don't, I like, was fast. I like watched it late. It was fast forwarding through commercials. So I probably missed that announcement. I just would like to talk to the execs at ABC because... What do you want to say? Three hours of content in a row is a lot. It is long. I personally can't even watch movies because I don't have the attention span for them. So three hours... Did you ever have the attention span for a three-hour movie? I don't think I really did. Probably not, but I did. Like, I did it. I don't know. I just didn't recognize it. I probably tuned out for like... 45 minutes and tune back in and like try to figure out what was going on. Uh, the only movie I really remember watching that's kind of long, but I don't remember how long it is. I just remember there was two tapes. I watched Titanic, Titanic like nobody's business. Yeah. Well, the thing about the two tapes is that tape one is so much better. As soon as the boat <laughs> starts sinking, it's just like, well, this is not as good. But, but you still popped it in. 
Yeah, of course. You still were like, sure, more Leo. Let's get that hand scene yeah. in, there, in, the, in the carriage, in the coach. Especially at like 13. You were like, let's turn yeah, this you're on. you're like, yeah, baby. <laughs> I, I agree with you. One of the reasons Oppenheimer was so good and impressive was that I was like, okay, I get it. Three hours. In the last 45 minutes, I've got notes, but like I made it through and I understood why. But yeah, three hours is too much. I got to say, I think they're also doing um, Jerry, Golden Bachelor, kind of a disservice by putting him on the same night. Uh, as Paradise. And this wasn't the original plan. It was supposed to be uh, Jerry on Mondays and Paradise on Tuesdays. But they switched it up, I assume, because of the writers and actor strikes and they don't have any other programming. So I'm not into it, but we'll make it work. And also, I want to say an hour of Jerry. Excellent. Thank you so much. Golden Bachelor being an hour and not two is a great idea. Let's not overdo it in this first go round. And I think Charity season could have also been an hour each week instead Mm -hmm. of two. And we certainly were stretching to get to the full three hours last night. I mean, can we talk about that? Why? Why not two hours? I think they like set this precedent and that's just like what they do. It's very hard for The Bachelor to like institute change, but they really need to because it was it was so painful. And so let's just start at the very beginning. Aaron B. Why? (sighs) Like, there was no reason for him to be there. There was no reason for him to even go to the rose ceremony. The only thing he did was actually like, take time away. Like, it was just ridiculous. I want to start even before then. Okay. The very beginning, there was an incredible amount of audience reaction shots to everything Jesse was saying. <laughs> so from literally from day dot of this programming, I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> we just got like, 45 seconds of audience filler of faces that nobody knows and they're being told what faces to make. That's not a good tell for what we're going to get for the rest of this episode. The funny thing is they also had so many Bachelor alum in the, in the so audience. So many. Like, for no reason. Why were Peter's parents there? Like, that was so bizarre. I, I, it, I, I, can't, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Peter's parents, they had, Ga- they, I, I would have liked to have heard from Gabby and her girlfriend. Like, let's get Gabby and Robbie on stage. Like, that's great. She's in a new relationship. They had Rachel there just to be sitting next to Brayden. Like, if I'm a former lead, I'm like, uh, I think I deserve better than just being in the audience for no reason. Especially if I'm like a recent former lead. Yeah. I mean, it was all over the place. We heard from Kat in Brooklyn like three different times or saw them three different times. Like, I don't really, I mean, it was... There was so much happening that made nothing like made no sense. Nothing connected to charity. I was just like, uh, it's it's contributed in no way. I just, to you know, like people are like making these decisions. That's what I'm like. This isn't just like of someone <laughs> like, it's not like they all just showed yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> like people are making these decisions, and I would love to understand why. I guess they want to like just show there's like Bachelor Nation is still a thing, but I'm okay for Bachelor Nation to not be a thing. Like that's one of the reasons people are so excited about Jerry. Also, like, I just, I just don't think it's even a question whether it's a thing or not. We know that the Bachelor alum hang out. We all have Instagram and TikTok. Right. Don't shove it down our throats. Also, the people that actually hang out weren't in attendance. It's true. Well, I think a lot of the cool kids don't want to be a part of this. Yeah, that's the problem. We didn't have any of the Greg Grippo gang. No Greg, no Andrew, no Rodney, no Nate, no Leroy, I think, is part of their crew. No Thomas, no Becca, which would be a great story to launch Bachelor in Paradise. Although, you know, Thomas and Becca are like mad at the show because Becca got fired from the podcast. Yes. But I'm just saying that would have been a great. Yeah, she's pregnant, like very close to giving birth. Like that would have been a great story. She proposed to him. Like it's all like a really cute story. They seem very happy. They seem great. They don't want to be associated. I know. It's really tough. And like, you know, Rachel's like, I'm out. I'm done here. I think Michelle is like, no, no more. I didn't see Caitlin Bristow there. Uh, I did not see Caitlin there. Although I guess maybe she doesn't tell all. I don't know. Kate, Caitlin's taking a break from public life. Also like Michelle, they had her at one of the last, I don't know if it was the mental all or the... F- at, yeah. It was Gabby and Rachel's finale. finale and then and they, they didn't, didn't address... Not- yeah the black face right. with Eric. And so I think since then they're like, she's like, I'm out. Yeah. I guess the the other, like the kind of like the kind way is like, they didn't want to take away from charity and Dotton. And it is a landmark moment for the show. Charity and Dotton are the first, I saw this on this phrasing on a bunch of 
Instagram accounts were the first monoracial black couple to come out of the show. So never heard that word. People I've never see- heard that word before in my life. I was wondering if that's like a is that's like a thing people say, because obviously biracial is a very common phrase. But yeah, monoracial is not. Couldn't you just say an all black couple? I don't I mean, I don't know. I'm not here to adjudicate anyone's blackness. So I think that's um, like if you identify. I've just never if, like, heard of monoracial. But like also like if you identify as black, but you are like technically biracial, like is it offensive for someone to like note that they're the first all black couple? Like, I don't know. Michelle and Nate were both biracial, but like, are they not a black couple? Oh, 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 oh. I forgot about Michelle and Nate because that didn't last very long. I know. Well, I don't know. Monoracials, I feel, feel like equally, it's just, that's weird. It is kind of weird, but it, nevertheless, it is kind of a big deal for this show that has such like a very bad history with race. And I think they did try to like, yeah, be more straightforward about it. What did you think about Joey asking? Uh, Charity's sister about like how she felt about Charity maybe being an interracial couple. Um, I'm totally fine with that. I like the straightforwardness of his question. I thought, I know we've, I feel like this season we've been saying like this person's stock rose. Uh, obviously, we know the, the news at the end of the episode. But in general, great performance by Joey. I've never seen a haircut improve someone's appearance as oh, much as with my Joey. Lord, <laughs> he looked great. Lord. <laughs> what a great haircut! <laughs> What's crazy is I wrote in our notes, "Great haircut, Joey." But like, they have access to haircuts, right? Yeah, but now that he's the bachelor, he's like being styled, and so they probably like do this. Whereas before, he was making all of his own decisions. But I, I agree with you. His his rise over the course of the season, like he just seems like a really, really good guy and like really Great thoughtful guy. and just like um, pretty honest. And even, even the way he was talking to the woman on stage at the end where it was like really awkward. I was like, Oh, he's uncomfortable. This is great. Like he's not so yeah. slick. <laughs> he's, he's kind of like a normal dude ish. And I normal ish. And I didn't give him enough credit. Did you hear him when she was like, I was so excited. Like, this is the best thing ever. Like, I couldn't even like think for the past like couple of days. And he was like, he was saying it kind of under his breath. But he's like, normal guy, normal guy. I'm just normal guy. Like, please. Like, <laughs> like she was acting very much like you're a celebrity. And he was like, mm, no, I actually don't want that at all. And that's not the typical casted bachelor. Total bachelor. They like the, oh, uh, 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 like, no problem, yeah, like, no problem. He's got to be really I'm so confident. great. He's kind of the opposite of Zach, who's definitely, like, not very confident and therefore, like, overcompensated by trying to, like, be this, like, slick bachelor. And Joey is just like, I am who I am and seems really comfortable with it. Uh, I also, in general, like, the car ride cry and stuff, like, a lot of the times to me seems a little performative, especially mm-hmm. from the guys I believed everything. I believed him crying in the car. I believed him on stage. His eyes were red. I feel like he was trying really hard on stage to like keep it together and not cry, especially knowing he's going to be the bachelor. He was probably like, I can't like be too distraught over this because yeah. I'm supposed to be da- like finding my wife. But I like that he showed emotion and wasn't just like, yeah, you know, and now I'm all good and I'm ready to find someone else. Like, and he, him even being like, I'd love a conversation with Charity. I haven't talked to her since that day. And I know. Yeah. Like all of it. Joey. Bravo. And that was like a very it was awkward the way they spoke to each other on stage because it's a pretty awkward way to see each other for the first time after <laughs> yeah. what happened. But it was really adult and it made me really like both of them even more. And I already liked both of them. Also. Joey was like, can we acknowledge how awkward this is? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, thank you. Thank you for acknowledging. I just, I, I know we are trying to figure out what was wrong with him. And I do believe that it was what he was saying when him and Charity had that conversation. But watching him tonight and even with Charity's mom, I'm like, he must come across as genuine as I feel like he is. He seems very warm. He seems like he makes people around him comfortable, like right away. And they really respond to that, especially the which Dot, I think, was so nervous that he did not bring that level of like warmth at all. Well, 
Dotton seemed, I mean, I guess we're just like jumping right into this. I want to talk more about Jake. Before we go to Dotton, can we just talk about what did they, or I guess it, I guess it is related to Dotton, but they just, her family made some comments that I thought were really interesting. Like I got the impression they were worried that like Dotton was too similar to other guys she has picked or something like that. Mm, yeah. And when her sister was like, you laugh a lot with Dotton, I was like, well, what's wrong with that? And I was just confused by some of her. And then and then her mom's like absolute unwillingness to weigh in. I just was like, what's going on? <laughs> okay. There's so much. There's so much here. For okay, for the three hours, for it being stretched as thin as you could stretch it to make it to three hours. There was some great stuff in this episode. There was. And this was the good stuff here. There's a lot to unpack, I think. I think that in general, it seemed that Charity's family liked Joey more. I think if she would have gotten them to tell her who, they all would have said Joey. Definitely. I think that Joey seemed to be more himself, seemed to be very comfortable, seemed to be excited to meet them, seemed like from a family's perspective, like, oh, wow, he's like really bought in. He believes in this. He wants this to happen. Like Charity, like, I've never, the chemistry that her and Joey like appeared to have in that scene was like better than we've seen so far. So definitely it was so strange to see them that comfortable. I'm like, did we miss like a secret date or something? I guess we did. We didn't see the whole overnight. We also, we also didn't see the whole final date. That was super weird. They showed her like walking in that dress in the morning and then they cut to her knocking on his door like for their final, they, they have a date. Like in during the day, yeah. it wasn't just like she's walking for fun, so they just cut that out. It was weird. Well, their chemistry was great. Yeah, as her sister said, a lot of PDA. Mm-hmm. And like to your point, like he is really warm. He is like mm-hmm. those things. Dotton, who I do think is really into charity, like we've seen it this entire series, and it's just funny because like obviously we've been watching them for nine weeks. Her parents got like what, two hours maybe, maybe less. And they thought the opposite of what everyone has probably probably been thinking for like seven weeks. I'm like, clearly Joey's better at a like elevator pitch than (laughs) Dotton. But Dotton was acting so weird to me. Like he seemed so cold, so rehearsed, so like trying to impress them instead of just being kind of like real. And I think that is the cool, funny guy. Right. In high school and college. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, I think that he was also, just really nervous. How tall? Oh, my God. When he knelt down to propose to her. So she's, she's wearing <laughs> he was, heels, right? He was her height. He was, if she, had, if height. she hadn't been wearing heels, they would have been eye to eye. Like, like actually. Yeah. <laughs> he is. I know Charity is really tiny. That's a big part of it. Yes. It was shocking. Shocking. It next to each other like that. And obviously, I don't know why it looked worse in that moment with him in his suit. He looked like a giant. I hope that his level of fame means that he will have new ways to have access to better tailored clothes. I think that because he is not a normal or not normal, but like just, you know, so much larger than most men. It must be not really, average size. Must be really hard to find good clothes. And then he needs to get them well tailored. And I think that that hopefully will be a part of his post show journey because like that sucks um i wonder how tall he is i think we looked it up once he's six seven okay six seven my one of my um brothers is like six eight ish and you kind of just gotta go with what's available you walk into the (laughs) store you're not expecting to get anything and then you see like oh they have they have tall shorts they have tall pants i'll just take one of those but it's not like they get to like choose what they want yeah how do you find clothes you just that's what I'm saying you take you randomly come across things that are long enough and you're just like oh yeah I'll take 10 of those you can't just like walk into the gap like where do you go no I mean Old Navy has like extra long so like you have to like find the spots that have extra long clothing also like I wouldn't say Old Navy's like super expensive but if you also don't have the budget to like find those places with extra long like you're just fucked you're high watering it or you got to move somewhere where it's really hot and you wear shorts most of the year 
but like, sure, does he have really long legs? Like, what's his what's his like distribution of of length? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think he has long legs. Because most shorts must be pretty short. <laughs> yeah, but you can find like basketball shorts that are long. You know right. what I mean? Like, you can. My brothers don't really like. Do people wear like nice shorts? Not really. Only right? for like golf. Yeah, that's the only type of shorts. I was, I was trying to think like when do they wear nice shorts or like non-athletic shorts? The only occasion I can think of is golf, and those are still technically athletic. Also, I feel like shorts. when you're when you're that tall, people just instantly like stereotype you and feel like you're an athlete, and so they kind of like expect you to be wearing athletic clothes. Right. So. The reason why I put his height in this to begin with, to bring it all back, is because I'm sure his mom was like, good looking, super tall. She's making her laugh. He's probably been like the cool athlete jock his whole life. And I don't even know if that's the case. It's definitely no. It's, I don't think it is. But if you had a hour interaction with him with no other information, I could see how you could have that impression, especially with him sweating and reciting lines. It seems like he's practiced. Yeah, I think he I think he was super nervous, whereas like when they were on stage together, um, when he was like kind of unrehearsed and like in like the small moments, so much better. He seemed so happy and he seemed like so just, much better. He seems like I know I've been saying this the whole time, but I still believe he seems really corny. And I think that like he's just like a kind of a softy and sentimental. So and he sweet. was and he was trying to seem like more put together for her family. And it probably came off as like insincere or something like that. But I just think, again, I think he was really nervous. But the way he was talking to the camera and the way that they like responded right before the proposal and during the proposal, he just seemed so genuine. Like he just seemed like really overcome with emotion. That is almost yeah. was like he didn't. And I thought actually one thing that was like super honest and you'd very infrequently get on the show was when he was talking about why he was crying. He was like, it's sad, but happy, but also kind of sad. And like, I think just for him, how far he's come and like how he was talking about his kid, like the kid on his green card and whatever, like there just must be so much emotion that goes into like getting engaged this way when also, you know, you think about like your long, like your story of immigration and everything and like. I just think he was feeling a lot of things and it was very real. And I, I love that he mentioned sadness because I think there is often sadness that accompanies happiness when you're starting like a new phase of life or you're reflecting on how far you've come or whatever. And I just thought that was very really cool. And like, that's the honest, like emotional health that a lot of these guys purport to have being like, I need to, I need yeah. to go to therapy to understand my emotions. But I felt like Dotton was actually kind of there. I agree with you. And I remember thinking like right after she said yes, or maybe like during his proposal, I remember thinking to myself, like so weird that I actually think they might be a couple that goes, that stays together for a while. Like I don't normally have that feeling from watching this show. Obviously, it happens every now and then, but I totally get why her mom had that feeling. I don't think she was like right, but only because she only had like that to go off of. Yeah. And watching the proposal and how they acted on stage with each other. I'm like, they seem so into each other. It seems like they're genuinely like so excited about all of it. Yeah, I, I thought it was really sweet. They seem she seems like a big dork too. Like she was like the way she was speaking when she was much less rehearsed and wasn't just talking like straight to camera made me really like her even more. And I think they're like they seem like a good match. Um <laughs> I was just thinking about their height discrepancy. <laughs> I mean, it's it's large. I don't, I don't know why my mind goes to that, but like imagine her having his babies. It's not gonna be fun. Your mind goes to that because they brought it up like right away. Yeah, obviously, always, right? Always. I'm it's ridiculous. Let's back right. off. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements. So many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. 
This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. I don't remember ever like exactly like uh, identifying this before. And I know Charity loved being The Bachelorette. Like I really do think she loved it all. But I also didn't get the impression from them that they were like, yeah, now let's go be famous and create TikTok. No, me neither. Not at all. And although she is doing Dance with the Stars, but that'll keep her busy. Um, that also just means they have to stay in LA, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. Yeah, I don't think she seemed like they wanted to like go and I don't know. Like she's not like, they're not trying to like parlay this into some kind of sponsorship deal necessarily. I do hope that they leave LA. Yeah, after. I just can't imagine Dot doing that. It seems like they haven't exactly figured out like where they'll live and stuff yet, which is like also fine. Like they're kind of like taking things as it comes. But I, I do like yeah. really hope they work out because they seemed really happy in this moment in a much more like sincere way than we often see him. I think that when he's sincere, it's very like moving just because like his spectrum is kind of like is is broad. I, neither of their parents seem that excited, by the way, in the audience. Yeah, when they asked her mom, like, are you happy? She was like, yeah, I am. I'm like, I am now. I, I'm like, I'm like, come on, are really you? like Joey. Also, how awkward to watch that next sitting next to his parents. So awkward. So awkward for them to watch their like future in-laws say that they like the other guy better. I know. And they and, not, and like had a fight over it, basically. So let's talk about this fight. I would love to. But first, before we do that, I want to talk about a special part of today's show brought to you by United Airlines. United is the largest carrier across both the Atlantic and the Pacific. And this year's schedule includes nearly 25 new routes. In fact, in 2023, United will fly to over 100 international destinations. And I was thinking about this when Jesse kept teasing Something we've never done before, which I'm still unclear exactly what was the we've never done it before on the show. But uh, he did reveal that they are sending them to Greece because Charity always wanted to go there, which cool, 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 cool. I I get it. But you know where else they could go that I think would be a great place for them in particular? They can ride bikes and all that. They could go to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. In fact, they could go to Amsterdam on United. In 2023, United will fly to over 100 international destinations including additional flights to Amsterdam. And if they went, it would be like, first of all, very in line with The Bachelor because they've gone there several times. And it's like one of the kind of key destinations. They do like the tulip thing or they ride bikes or it just seems like there's a lot to do for for a couple there. And I just feel like that would be a a really good place for them. I mean, sure, Greece, that that sounds nice as well. But Charity strikes me as someone who might like to have a slightly more active vacation and I don't know about Dotton, but since they had that uh, jogging date or the 10K date, whatever, it seems like they're game game to do that kind of thing together. So just something to consider. Wherever you travel for your couple's getaway, make sure you check out United Airlines. Plan your trip today at united.com or on the United app. Remember, flight schedules are subject to change. While we're on the subject on travel really quickly. Yes. It feels like the Bachelor franchise was like, you know what? We spent $10 on this season. So <laughs> let's show everyone that we're invested and spend 10000 on a vacation for charity and dot. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> they probably had like extra money or maybe they were supposed to go to Greece and they never did. So they're like, okay, we'll just send them after. You get to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still, you still, still get to have some glamour shots. When I saw that vacation, I was like, huh, could have worked some of this into the season. Definitely. But also, if I'm charity, I would much rather just go on a one-on-one vacation with my fiance. So it works out for everyone. They went to Greece and Amsterdam during Hannah Brown season. So maybe maybe they were supposed to go and they just never did. Although they didn't leave the U.S. So except for Fiji. Bizarre. They didn't go much of anywhere. Anyway, we were talking about their parents and the combo with charity and her mom. Oh, yes. I said, let's talk about this argument. I I wanted to also particularly tap into your mother perspective as a mother 
Mm. Do you think that one of the reasons her mom didn't say who she picked was because she didn't want to, because she knows like charity would either like put too much weight in it or would like defy her? Like, why do you think her mom was holding back so much? No, I think that three things. First thing is, I'm not choosing who you're going to be with for the rest of your life. So <laughs> like her just being like, I need an answer. I need an answer of what, sh- what I should do. It was kind of like, no, like I can give you like my insight to the 30 minutes I spent with these two yeah. young men. But like, I think it would be different if the mom deeply knew both people and felt like a concern for one or like felt very strongly for another. Like, I can't tell you what to do off of my one interaction with both of them. You are the one that spent time with them. Like you have to make this decision. I, I don't, I don't even want my opinion to sway you too much because I don't know them like you do. I literally don't know them at all. So I think that's one. Two, her mom's like, you're choosing one of them. So I'm not about to sit here on national television and tell you which one to choose and then have you choose the other one. And then it's like, I'm, I, I turn into Peter's parents. So thank you. <laughs> lastly I didn't want to give you my opinion and I damn sure I'm not giving you my opinion after you talking to me that way now I'm definitely not giving you my opinion did you think she was rude yeah huh I didn't think so I thought she was being like like petulant I thought she was just being like kind of like regressing like you do around your parents sometimes it was a little much and maybe because I was thinking like the tv cameras were there or whatever but like I don't know yes obviously everyone talks to their parents like that sometimes but like yeah, like my mom was trying to no. tell me about um like bacteria that I could get, like like flesh eating bacteria that's like moving to like the <laughs> pond, like northern waters. And I was like, I don't want to talk about this. And I was like, I have to go. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Obviously, I think everyone does it uh at times, but I it, I don't know. It's also like a thing in the black community, like you are not talking to your mom that way. Mm. And then I think. I think differently of it because like, I guess part of it was like in private. No, yeah. nothing's on, in private on the show. Yeah. You're definitely not doing it on TV or in public. And I thought she was just like a bit dismissive and it was like, whatever, mom. Ugh, okay, whatever. And I was just like, calm down. I thought her mom was trying to just be really even. And I think that she made it seem like she disliked Dotton more than she probably did just because she was trying to hold back. Like just... Because she didn't want to say anything. I don't know if her mom picked up on this too, but ba- like the conversation with her sister and the conversation with her mom, like her sister tried to like backpedal. Yeah. Because I think her sister thought, based on what she saw, she was like, oh, she obviously likes Joey more. And was like kind of going down the Joey route. And then when Cherry was like, okay, okay. And like started crying. Her sister was like, no, 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 no. Like I like Dotton too. I like Dotton too. Like Dotton's <laughs> awesome. And I'm like, right. Like, she clearly wants it to be Dotton. Clearly. So yes. if she didn't, she would not be act- acting the way that she was acting. She was getting mad at her family for not choosing Dotton. Right. And so I feel like her mom's like, it's better for me to not say anything. Like I right. started telling you about how, why I like Joey and you got mad at me. So it seems like you're picking Dotton and I wasn't going to say that. So why do you want right. me to then vocalize that I want Joey? When you're not picking him regardless, you clearly want to pick Dotton. And if I pick Joey, you're picking Dotton anyways. And if you pick Dotton, no matter what, why would I want to be on record on TV of having picked the other person? It's just awkward forever. 100%. So I also think that she recognized by Charity's reaction, because they know her way more than we do. She was picking Dotton. And even the opposite of that, I'm sure she didn't want to pick Dotton just to appease Charity. And she's like, nah, I want Joey to know that I really liked him and I enjoy- <laughs> enjoyed our time together. <laughs> so I'm also not just going to pick Dotton to make you feel good. So I'd rather just say nothing. Yeah, Mia really liked Joey, her sister. <laughs> she was like, had yeah. a great time. <laughs> they all, they all, it seemed like all of them liked Joey more. Yeah. But again, that doesn't mean they didn't like Dotton. It's, we met him for 45 minutes, two hours, whatever it was. And this is our opinion off of that one time. Also, that doesn't mean that just because they liked him more, you should pick him. It's just like, okay, that's who that I had a better vibe with on this one day for one hour. Right. And I think they all picked up based off of her reaction pretty quickly. She's picking Dotton. We all like Joey. So I don't know what you want from us. Right. It is a pretty awkward situation. I think that also I'm like, 
charity. You know who they're picking. Like, stop asking. You know what it is. You, also, you, you, can, you, you know can what read day the went clues better. in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can read the clues in the room. You know it's Joey for them. Like, just move on. Why do you want them to say Joey in, like, in front of Dotton, essentially, in a few months? Like, just let it go. Just let them say what their opinion and then, like, make your decision. You're choosing Dotton. You've been, you were going to choose Dotton for the past seven weeks. So, like, <laughs> let's just move on from this. I'm surprised she let Joey propose or, like, give his speech, basically. I, yeah. Do they have to? I don't know what the rules are. Uh, I guess, like, no one abides by any rules anymore. The ba- in the past, the rumor has been that Mike Fleiss would be okay with the Bachelorette, like, preventing the runner-up from pro- from proposing, but always wanted the, the Bachelor to, like, allow it to happen for, like, maximum drama. It's, again, a rumor. I don't know if that's true. Of course, he's also gone. But all to say, she probably could have stopped him, but... I think it kind of gets back to her liking, liking playing the role, so which is fine, you know. So, I also I also liked when Charity said to her mom, "They know what they signed up for." Like I I like that she was like acknowledging <laughs> that this was a TV show, <laughs> while also being like incredibly intense about who she was going to pick. I don't know. I I thought I thought in general it was like entertaining TV. It kind of made me like everyone. My big question about her family is why her dad didn't do any interviews or they didn't air any of the interviews that he did with the camera he he wasn't into it i just think he's like maybe not a very like um uh, on your first meeting maybe he doesn't talk a lot i don't know he just didn't also he probably was like what are we doing here this is weird he was like do i like sports <laughs> i i feel like he was probably just like not into it and was just like i'm here to support you but like do i want to get all into it no and i think that's fair oh absolutely absolutely fair <laughs> On their final dates, I have this in my note, um, that when she was crying with Joey, mm-hmm. I'm like, and she was just like, I'm crying because I'm so happy. I was like, no, you're <laughs> crying because you feel so bad. I think she actually did. Like, I think she loved Joey yeah, me and too. cared about him and probably like started to care about him more and more as like the show went on. And at that point, obviously, or way before that point, she knew it was Dotton. But was right. just like, fuck, I really like this guy. He's a nice guy. He's done nothing. There's been no red flags. Like, there's nothing wrong with him. I feel so sad that I'm going to have to, like, hurt him. Yeah, I know. He just... um And Joey's face, like, I feel like he's a hard person to, to like, hurt. Like, when he was crying, I was like, oh, God, I don't like this. Yeah, he looked he looked really sad. Like, he was he yeah. seems like a good guy. I think he's just really easy to be around. That's my impression. I'm curious who he was friendly with in the house. I don't have any feel for that at all. Kind of same with Dotton. Um, maybe that's because they were clearly the front runners the whole time. So they didn't like show them socializing that much. But like Aaron, we saw getting into fights. I saw him socializing. He was part of the FP business. But Joey and Dotton, I have like no idea what they're like as like friends. Wait, we also like just grazed over the Aaron stuff. I mean, do we really need to talk about it more? Who gives a shit? Well, I just, I just want to know why did she have him get dumped again? I think why did she they- make him dress up in a suit and go to a rose cer- ceremony only to be like, let me go talk to you again? I think there was no drama otherwise. They like needed something. And so I think she just like said, OK, it was never addressed with Dotton or Joey. Like they were just kind of like, all right, I don't know. We don't know what happened. He came back and then he left. I know. And <laughs> I we know. just pretended like it didn't happen. And I thought she was going to address it because twice at that rose ceremony, she's like, I just want to begin by saying. And I thought she was like going to explain, but she didn't. <laughs> no, she's like, I appreciate you coming all the way out here. Can we go have a chat? And I was just like, why did you make him do all this again? I know. They must have been like, if you do this. That has to be, that has to have been a producer being like, you got to have him go to the rose ceremony. Yeah. You got to dump him again. And now he has a better narrative for Paradise. So they're probably trying I to thought, like, set I was up. like, to your point in the very, very beginning of this pod, when you were like, why would you do this? This makes no sense. I was thinking like, he's trying to get The Bachelor? Maybe. Oh, Maybe by he way, thought it was still possible. Yeah. I don't know if this happened to anyone else, but my while I was watching it, my recording fucked up when it turned 11 oh. and fast forward to the end of the show. Oh, weird. So like I was in the mid, I was mid charity arguing with her mom and then it was like joey standing there with one of his contestants and i was like oh okay joey's a bachelor <laughs> yeah i had to watch this morning um and so i saw on social media that it was him but like i, I knew you know like also i when- didn't know i did not know it was gonna be uh, honestly because i guess like they haven't announced it in some of the past final roses or they've no they they've usually- announced it early 
they use it sometimes they announce it early, but they they usually do it like this. But the other thing is I knew Dotton definitely won. I mean, we knew anyway, but then when People Magazine ran a story over the weekend about Jesse Palmer's wife being pregnant, they accidentally included like a glamour picture of Charity and Dotton when they first published it. <laughs> and oh so they God. spoiled the finale. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Bad beat for people. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that, but I I mean we all knew that it was it was Dotton, so that's not like that big of a surprise. But I was just like, oh, okay, well, there it is. And he's with some random person I've never seen before. Which that whole section, Aaron thing was a waste of time. Him, Jesse Palmer, like going around the audience and interviewing random girls. I was just like, what is going on? Then I thought to myself, the end. It has to be all of them because why else would they take our time in like introducing us to these women? It's true. And <laughs> nope, just one. Just one. <laughs> they need to rethink this format completely. They, there's just a lot of changes that need to be made. But three hours was far too long. Also, I didn't like, I don't like how they do um, segments like along the way. Like show me the finale and then let's move on to all the studio stuff. Like I don't need the sit down with Aaron before the episode ends. I don't need to sit down with Joey before the episode ends. Like, I do think in some ways it helps preserve like the narrative. They go from the proposal straight to them. They don't have to rehash the breakup or whatever. But it just doesn't work. And it's not that dramatic. Mm -hmm. It breaks it up too much. Yeah. And you just don't feel like you're getting the final episode. You're like, it's like a three hour slog instead of getting to like really be in it with Charity and her family, which I did enjoy. So, I mean... I enjoyed their pain. Only Charity's pain. Her family was fine. <laughs> I don't know. I overall, it was like a good season. What's what? What would you give it? Uh, like from a A to F scale, I would say it was a B, a B minus. B minus. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Same page as my daughter would say. Jinx, double drinks, triple drinks, something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does she do the thing where you you can't speak until someone says your full name? No. Oh, someone says Jinx. I've never heard of that. Oh, well. she's like jinx, double jinx, triple jinx, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, something really fast. It's, it's <laughs> something that's going around the kindergarten classroom, apparently. Uh, love it. I would say B minus. It was not horrible. I thought Charity overall was like a pretty good. She was great. Bachelorette. It's crazy because to start the season, we thought she had a great group of guys. And by the end, I was like, eh. well, when we saw the Paradise trailer. I was like, who are these people? I didn't recognize like any of the men. The women I recognized more, but the men, I was just like, who the fuck is that? I have no idea who Kat was making out with in the water. Yeah, me either. But also, I didn't even know that was Kat until he said it. I so know. I'm like, I think we just, I think the lighting and the angles, we just got, I got to see more. It's obviously like dark in, at Paradise and there's not like a great, forever. There's not, there hasn't been like the best lighting there. So it's yeah. not anything new, but it's easier to know who the people are when like we see them talking on one of the beds and then they like walk towards the water. Yeah. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? I am excited about Paradise. Like I'm excited about Paradise and Jerry. Me too. I'm also looking forward to F Boy Island, which uh Katie Thurston's gonna be on. It's gonna be on the CW. Excited about both. I'm not excited about them being stacked. Uh we also talked about this before we got on, but like eleven PM, it's just a late night. It's too late. It's too late, I agree. We are old. We are really and old. Are, isn't this this format's going to go from 8 to 11, right? Mm -hmm. It's a long night. They're probably, they probably are like, okay, people DVRing stuff and watching next day or whatever. So I mean, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, basically. Overall, though, I wish Charity and Dot the best. And thanks for coming along on this journey with us. We'll be back in September. Is that? Yeah, we're taking next week off. So I guess we'll be oh back. My God, late. Can you believe it's September? No, it sucks. This year is just... It's flying oh. by. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> but good news. Yes. Summer being over means the fall programming is rolling on in. And football. I'm like really ready for football. So. And basketball. Not ready for that. But I am ready for sports in general. Like so happy to have sports back. Just also like F1's been on a break for the last three weeks. I just like. No offense, baseball. But yeah. yeah. Not the background noise I need. Um, thank you, as always, to our producer, Ashley Smith, and also to Jade Whaley for bearing with us through this whole season. We'll be back. Um, have a great rest of your month, everybody. 